Welcome back. It is 642 here on your Tuesday. A recent survey from the French company Zellrose found that 43% of people don't have any sort of life insurance and only about half of people between the ages of 25 and 34 have any at all. So here to tell us more about the ins and outs of life insurance, when you should start thinking about it and how to know how much to get in the first place is Ellie Platt from Platt Insurance. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks nice for coming in. Nice to see in. you. So uh, people have car insurance, they have home insurance. Why is life insurance such a different conversation? For well, people? it's really important. It begins with one question. If somebody depends on you financially and something were to happen to you, then you probably need life insurance. Okay, so and, and I know there's different types of mm -hmm. life insurance, whole life term, and a couple others, right? I like So, so what, yeah. what is the difference between all of them? Yeah, and so that's one of the main reasons a lot of people don't get it, is they don't know where to begin. Mm -hmm. It's just knowledge. So really, there's two main types. Um, there's term, or what we call temporary insurance, which lasts for a certain period of time, so anywhere from 10 to 30 years. And then there's permanent insurance, and that's where you'll hear about whole life or universal life um, but permanent insurance is really so long as you pay the premium um, you'll have that life insurance for your whole life um, a lot of times those types of policies build cash value um, they could be used for tax deferred um, growth um, there's uh, different ways that you can use it um, but for the most part um, again there's the temporary there's the permanent um, term insurance tends to be less expensive okay. so somebody maybe that has a, a big life insurance need let's say um, you have young kids at home a mortgage um, where you need a lot of coverage term is usually a good idea because it's a lot less expensive than permanent. Okay, well that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, less expensive the younger you are too? And is it, if you're older and don't have any yes. life insurance, you're uh -huh. watching this right now and thinking, okay, yeah. uh, is it still attainable? Absolutely. I mean, it's definitely the least expensive the younger and healthier you are. So that's one reason we say to people, get it now. Somebody even in their early 20s, you know, you're not even thinking about a family or a house yet, but definitely something to get because it'll be the least expensive. Um, also, you lock in. Um, if you have a good health, um, if you're, you're in good health and you get a policy, you lock that in um, so you can convert it to something down the road. Let's say you did have um, some issue or health issue that would stop you from getting insurance. So, uh, But it's definitely attainable no matter what age um but the but the good or really the answer is just to do it as soon as possible i, I mean obviously none of us want to think about that end of our life yes, right, situation right. Is, that, is that one of the, the challenging things that you find talking to people about policies like this that they just don't want to even want to think about it i think they don't want to think about it it's an uncomfortable conversation but also it's a priority i mean it is a cost you know things are tight right now so it is a financial priority and so in people's mind they think oh that's not going to happen it's down the road i think you know being on the front lines we have so many stories of people who um, you know, had life insurance and it really um, protected their financial future. And we know those people that didn't have it. Yeah. Um, that's one of the first questions, you know, when somebody passes away, especially at a young age, that's the first question, did they have life insurance? Um, and that's really just such a gift that you can give your family. So one of the tricky parts is, is simply knowing how much to, yes. to get. So, uh -huh. so how, is, there, is there a tried and true method to kind of calculate how much you need or is it just yeah. kind of, I mean, obviously it's based on every individual. Yeah, it's, it's individual. It's based on, um, you know, you want to look at what your immediate expenses are, funeral expenses, um, any debt that you might have, plus any um, ongoing income you would have, so let's say Social Security or retirement income, and then um, you subtract those and it'll help you come up with your need. Um, there's a good calculator online. Our website has one at platinsurance.com. Another uh, Life Happens has some great resources. Um, but, you know, a good rule of thumb, sometimes people will say between 10 and 15 times your gross income um, is a good rule of thumb of what you would need. So what's your best advice for somebody who has maybe held off on, yeah. on getting life insurance, what, what, what would you tell them? The biggest thing I want to say is that um, a lot of people have life insurance through their work. And so um, a lot of times people won't get it for that reason, but you have to consider you, you're going to leave that job. Most of the time it's not portable. Um, so it's a good idea to have standalone life insurance coverage outside of your work. Um, you know, but really no one wants to think about it, but you know, there, there's so many stories out there and I th just think it's a gift you could give your family and, and um, it's a huge part of protecting their financial future. That's a really good point. Ellie, great stuff yeah, as always. Nice Thank you very you. much for coming in. Appreciate it. We have trivia coming up after the break.